is here with us this morning. Air transport that is affordable and robust leads to expansion of local markets, increased access to foreign markets, and accelerated economic development. The vision sector in Africa supports and promotes international tourism. Our current and future challenge is on how to manage the growth in air traffic in a safe, secure, and efficient manner. For me to be here in Nairobi, Kenya's traveling capacity, and to welcome you all to this 11th ITO Air Services negotiation event, commonly known as ICA. Everyone present today is fully aware that the aviation system has evolved throughout the decades to become an irreplaceable global network connecting the world's cultures and economies. It brings together families and friends as well as suppliers, producers, and their customers conveying more than 11 million passengers daily on over 100,000 flights. As air services negotiators, you have the capability to augment this impasse quite dramatically by opening skies and facilitating new direct routes through more inclusive multilateral agreements. Allow me to express our sincere gratitude to the International Civil Aviation Organization for the privilege and the honor of granting Kenya the opportunity to host this event. Our own Vision 2030 does identify aviation as a key driver for development, growth, and wealth creation. About 80% of tourists visiting Kenya use air transport. It is also the easiest and fastest means to transport perishable produce across the globe, such as horticulture, as well as fresh flowers, which are a major uh, part of our Kenyan economy. And it is in this context that my government has taken steps to improve civil aviation-related infrastructure, safety, oversight, and security. And as a country, we now have been classified under Category 1 status by the Federal Aviation Administration, granted the last point of departure status by the TSA, both agencies of the U.S. government. As we gather here today, we are cognizant of the fact that the efforts made by ICAO since its inception, not only in developing global policies that guide international air transport, but also making provisions for states to significantly reduce barriers to trade and movement of people and freight. Mission of the intricacies involved in air service negotiations, the need to have multiple opportunities to meet various states at a single venue to the ultimate objective of enhancing global connectivity and ease of movement of people and enhance trade through air transport. The cow has seen it fit to have this annual event, and for that, with these few remarks, let me say then it is my pleasure to join you in declaring the 11th Cow Air Services Association event of 2018 officially open to wish you all fruitful and meaningful deliberations.
cargo handling, freight takes and oil fields. And at the same time also, we also have a lot of challenges of regulations, especially the lack of generalization. We have restrictions on traffic rights and we have protectionism. In addition to that, some African countries have a policy to favor forward carriers against the interest of African airlines. It fundamentally comes down to issues around there's no consensus on what liberalisation actually is. And if you've got no consensus on where you're starting from, it's very difficult to reach your share demand um, I think uh, taking off my ATIP hat and putting on my Australian hat, I am in a few capacities. Um, I think there are realistic prospects of um, achieving a useful multilateral agreement on air cargo which could provide a, a framework for how market access and um, ownership control could look like in the future. However, it would take a change of mindset among member states and industry who um, by and large see in um, some exceptions C3 as intrinsically linked and um, there's a view that we can't move on one without moving on the other. So until we take, um, break that nexus, uh, it's going to be very difficult to see how we move forward. Transporting cargo on uh, foot, foot passenger aircraft is very difficult because when it comes to perishables or uh, when uh, you have uh, some payload limitations, you will offload first the cargo. And uh, we need really to have an approach and uh, to favorize full cargo airlines. But it's uh, not easy because uh, most of air service agreements is, are oriented to passenger uh, operators. But because of the nature of the cargo, uh, the way the cargo uh, flows are unbalanced, the cargo business need 50 freedom and also 70 freedom. And uh, also in uh, this agreement, the designation, sometimes full passenger services are designated, cargo operators are not. For cargo business, you need to have some flexibility for the capacity and uh, for the routes which are reserved. So I think really we need a specific approach for cargo business. I would like to give emphasis on the Yamasoko decision and that of the site. The Central Africa Air Transport Market is recognized again by the head of states as a pilot project to Agenda 20. Of a, of, of a liberalized regime where we would like to request the foreign carriers to cooperate with the African carriers. And this is really important because African carriers play a very important part in the economy, they pay taxes, they, 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 they bring in employment. And in the case of the foreign carriers, a lot of the taxes and a lot of the revenues are kept in their foreign countries. So what we would like to request the government is that please do not stop the free trade and public trade, but encourage foreign carriers to collaborate with African carriers so that we can actually have a reciprocal relationship. Uh, this is a side event organized by Kenya, and uh, I can only say that it could have come at a better time because it's a fact that this is a male dominated industry. Uh, even from the audience, I can hardly see the flowers. So, uh, it will be a very brief session on ICAO Women in Aviation Initiative, which, as indicated in the program, is focused on removing barriers to women's participation in aviation and advancing their professional development. The ICAO president added. Uh, region in his speech and this afternoon we want to add that no women should be left behind in my presentation. We are very proud of the few female voices in the field including but not limited to the Secretary General of ICAO, Dr. Fan Liu, 
Kenya's representative to IKO, Ms. Mercy Awari. Uh, on the Kenyan scene, we have Captain Koki Muli of Kenya Airways, who was the first African female pilot rated for Boeing 787. Indeed, we have a number of women. Sometimes when I fly around Kenya or in the region, I, we have an all-female crew um, from the cockpit all the way, and we really, really are, are very proud. At the policy level, we have a constitution that we passed in 2010 that actually mainstreams the gender issues and requires that uh, at least 30%, uh, there should not be more than, there should be at least 30% of either gender in, in any public appointments and so on. We, and, and we are happy about this. Of course, we know that we need to push much, much more. We need to get to because if we are 50% of the population or 51% of the population, we should have 51% of the positions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to continue to be in this field, we have to start at home, but we also have to start in colleges, we have to start in industries, trying to bring in women and giving them the same opportunities as men have had since about well, the World Bank noted that more than one country countries continue to impose legal difference between men and women in areas such as the possibility for women to sign a contract or travel abroad to manage property and to interact with public authorities or with the private sector. And there are still places in this world where women earn less than men for the same work. That's why the importance of the legal framework, which is closely linked to political will. It is not only about writing or regulating what we want to happen, but about monitoring that, is, that it is a security. There have been a lot of activities. Also, there is the Air Transport Action Group, uh, which was comprised of all the ministers, Ayanga, uh, ETA, TANSO, uh, and many more. Uh, industry that met this summer to also discuss on how to promote gender equity and diversity in general. And there was an emphasis on the importance of diversity and its importance to the development of the education sector. Now, I would like to say we are doing a lot, but there is much more that needs to be done. We have an assembly resolution and have actions that need to be implemented. We need to encourage strategies and plans of actions on national and international level. And it should not stop here. We should also follow it up in the assembly next year. And of course, everybody is responsible. It's not only the women. All of us, we have daughters and we have children who need the support. At the end, I would like to just say something. The action we take today will ensure that our children and grandchildren will never mention gender equity in the future. And I pray that this is gonna happen in the future.
to the impact assessment is that the fares often rise for the most price sensitive of those consumers. There are a number of various restrictions that we see coming into being. And our position is that air services agreements, when it talks about tariffs, should be drafted to avoid restrictive pricing provisions, allow pricing based on the market, based on consumer preference, allow airlines to innovate around what it is that consumers want, uh, avoid older style provisions that would limit price regulation, waive tariff filing requirements to the extent possible, and avoid the provisions that allow for the double approval of tariffs, um, as we believe that those would interfere with market-based pricing decisions and the innovation that allows for that. So governments often see the industry as an elitist industry that can absorb as many taxes as possible. The more you bring taxes, the more the cost of travel increases and it reduces the ability of people to travel. And therefore, from the ICAO perspective, in 2017, we launched what is the benefits of aviation. And we tried to see how we can promote such benefits through a political platform so that other sectors of the economy, the government, can see that there's more to benefit from aviation than just taxation. See when you're drafting this that an authorization is um, is uh, going to be granted with a minimum of procedural delay, and the, the next point the industry would be looking for is that there isn't a revocation of an authorization without prior notice and consultations. So that's the primary rule. There's an exception there where immediate action is required on safety or security grounds or to prevent an imminent infringement of um, uh, identified areas of law in the agreement. Air transport in Africa is expected to double over the next 15 years. This is a huge opportunity for our industry. Despite these opportunities, in Africa, aviation industry is facing a lot of challenges which need to be addressed. In 2017, African Airlines lost $1.66 per passenger carried, while the global average net profit was $9.27. Africa's contribution to global aviation traffic is 2%. When I joined um, IATA almost 10 years ago, it was 2%. So what does that tell us? Is it that it's not growing? The things that we as um, the Trade Association for Airlines globally and the air, all the airlines in Africa are doing about it is continued advocacy with our partners, jointly with um, AFCAC, the AU, with ICAO, with AFRA, and all the other stakeholders out there. We know that one, we have to create awareness and sensitization about the benefits of aviation, as we heard this morning from ICAO, um, this is really important because without aviation, modern society would just not exist the way it does today. Um, uh, uh, and, and if the, the people in Africa, there's no middle class growing, statistics show that there is a growing middle class, but not fast enough. How, how much of the income can the middle class man in Africa allocate to Air transport, number of travel per person is the, is, is the lowest in the world. So if people don't travel, it's, it's normal that the airline have challenges. But the airline cannot resolve it by themselves. They have to, it has to be a, a, a holistic approach. So that's, that is what uh, I call all of us at different levels to do, to create that holistic environment where, that environment where we look at problems holistically. And if, hopefully, we can accelerate the growth. Uh, but the thing we have to look out for is protections. Because cooperation can easily go, and let's do it together, let's wear everybody off. I think, as an airline, we need to challenge your competition. Because that keeps you sharp, that keeps you efficient, that keeps you looking forward, that keeps you developing.
So, as much as I would like to have no competition, don't get me wrong. <laughs> there should be, because it keeps us all sharp. But within that competition, there should be cooperation. And cooperation towards the common goal of Africa. <laughs>Now, the objective of, of um, that meeting was to address some of the air navigation challenges that the, uh, the AFI region, that was his reason. Uh, and then the initiative was to enable participating NSP to standardize the element of their safety management system in line with their peers. I think the key word there is standardize. And then the result would allow ANSP to determine the maturity level of their safety management uh, systems. Now, um, ANSPs who are not part of this, we're requesting them to identify peers. And, and peers can be based on your airspace, uh, whether it's, it's uh, similar, the size is the same, or it's, it's, it's um, next to each other, or, or it can be you have the same equipment. Uh, you, you know, you, you, use, you can use your own discretion, especially the operational people. You, 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 you understand this better. I know that air traffic controllers understand you know, their environment much better than management it, it does. So you, 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 you are you know, requested to be the ones who are taking lead in this, especially in, in those areas of conflict in your um, airspace um, uh, management. The groups above, um, that the five groups that I've indicated, these are the things which we have pulled out, which in the meantime can be done. Training in SMS, measurement of safety culture to be done on ad hoc basis, um, identification of dedicated SMS as, as, as staff by review partners and budgeting for the implementation because budgeting was uh, is, is the main program problem about the pro projects that uh, when you need to go and, and do the, the reviews you need to budget for that and if it's not in your budget uh, there is a problem Asante <music> is the SATAM. The single Africa air transport market will ensure African aviation plays its role and it's really just the fulfillment of the Yamoussoukro decision taken in 1988. So we've come a very long way. The SATAM really is a fulfillment of what's been done in other markets. Um, the main effect is to turn the fragmentation that we see of different national markets and make sure that we have one single domestic market for African carriers to participate in. And when the Saturn becomes fully operational, an eligible airline from an air carrier from an African country will be able to simply fly into another African country's air airspace. That's really what, what, what it is. And then we've detailed what all the benefits of this simple procedure would, would be. Economic growth. That is what we're speaking about. That is the end game. Economic growth, regional integration for Africa. So looking at profitability uh, in Africa, 
we see that you know the last time the industry on the continent made a profit was in 2010 and eight years later we're still forecasting uh, a loss-making situation and ladies and gentlemen the game plan is before us why are we not executing the game plan okay an important issue when we talk of uh, profitability and uh, airline uh, sustainability are the cost drivers in Africa. And we, we know and have heard uh, over time that you know, it's doing business in Africa is, is expensive and, 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 dif and difficult. And you'll see from this uh, uh, slide that the center line there, everything to the right, uh, of that center line means that those costs are higher than the industry average and everything on the left are, are those things that are lower and we'll see things that are within our control I believe you know you use charges the airlines uh, uh, aeronautical authorities that is those are concrete things we can address to ensure that we we create an enabling environment for the airlines and then on the positive side, where we are uh, doing better than the world average um, in terms of cost of other expenses, depreciation and amortization. Um, as we know, we, we have a lot of new aircraft on the continent, but also a lot of second-hand aircraft, which contributes to, to that statistic. How are IATA initiatives impacting the cost drivers in, in, in Africa? Strong advocacy you know, and, and, and joint advocacy. Um, air service agreement uh, best practice clauses. We, we had a very fruitful workshop yesterday where um, uh, we gave input into best practices in terms of um, uh, uh, the clauses of, of ASAs. Uh, airport privatization efforts. And we, we have gone on record to, to say that, you know, privatization really works in an environment where you have a competitive situation but it must be a situation where there's strong competitiveness and our experience has been that we don't have that environment so we we, we that has to be treated with 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 caution So uh, three major factors contributed to the development of drone regulations in Rwanda. One, the emergence of drone technology coupled with the, the cheap availability on the market. Rwanda thought that uh, even if we, we, we tend to ignore the presence of, of drones, they will still be there. So uh, in trying not to be caught off guard by the, te uh, the technology being used we, Rwanda decided to have regulations. Basically, on this one, we, are, we want to tell you that our leadership was actually thinking that uh, if we don't put controls in place before they become too much for us, it, we may fail even to control it at some stage. So we, we started... Uh, Today I'm here primarily to talk, I'll give you a little bit of an overview of, of what we do at World Fo Food Program. Uh, we've got decades of experience delivering uh, humanitarian cargo and we, uh, especially in my division, it's humanitarian air cargo. The reason I'm here is to talk about our shift to unmanned aircraft delivering humanitarian air cargo. So unmanned aircraft, uh, the pilot is on the ground, the remote pilot is in could be in a car, could be on a ship, uh, could be in a, in a bunker, almost anywhere. But the way that that uh, remote pilot flies the unmanned aircraft is with a command and control link or a C2 link. So that loon balloon can actually serve as a uh, link making the radio line of sight analysis much further, so enabling BV loss operations. My understanding is Kenya will be one of the first states to have fully covered 4G uh, coverage. So these are just some local highlights, and I'm sure you've seen this in the papers. So how do we get there, path forward? We will be using best practices. Uh, I'm also working on the uh, UN peacekeeping force. So our operations, we look to make 
as best practices. And if we come into a state, say for example, with the FlyOx, under Article 33, if we're fortunate enough to gain airworthiness uh, type certification and airworthiness certification, is to work with neighboring states so that that process doesn't have to be done again, that I won't name a state, but let's say it happens in a state, that surrounding states and then can accept that airworthiness certification and that authorization so that it could fly cross border or within the border as a domestic matter. I'd like to make my presentation relating to the commercial operation of drones and what our strategy is as a Kenyan company to go into implementation once the drone regulations have been approved. In 2017, my organization uh, became the winner of the IATA Air Cargo Innovation Award and we came up with the design of a UTM concept for Africa and we won a check of $20,000 from IATA, which is uh, quite rare. So thank you so much for that. Uh, we, we intend to be a drone operator and a service provider in Kenya and we are licensed uh, by the civil aviation uh, to operate uh, manned aircrafts under astral aviation. And uh, Astral Aerial Solutions is a subsidiary which has been specially created to operate uh, cargo drones, which we expect to do in 2019 onwards. You must remember that KWS covers about 8% of the country. We, we are 12% of the GDP. We, do, um, we, have about, we employ about 6,000 people. We're a massive force that can really help uh, with the regulations and, uh, and especially the enforcement of, these, of this equipment. So we're looking to make Kenya the world leader in drones for conservation. It's a really big part of what we're trying to do. The rangers are getting more, you know, they, ha they deploy at night, they're in remote areas in the middle of nowhere. If they get uh, injured at night, rescuing them is almost impossible. Um, yet if, we still have to protect the rhinos. So you can have a rhino sanctuary with all the security, but then if, if there's a shots are fired, it's very difficult to to go and find out what those shots were fired at two o'clock in the morning, because they could be shooting and laying in ambush, waiting for the car to come, and they just, uh, you know, that's the next kind of thing that's gonna happen with the proliferation of small arms. Whereas if a unit had a drone, the drone would go ahead and you'd see people hiding in the bush, so you could save a lot of lives. Present a company known as, a startup company from Spain, known as Canard Drones. It started as a boot camp, as, what you call as a hub. We are the first company in the world who do navigation aid calibration using drones. At the moment, the whole world uses calibration using aeroplanes. Number one, safety is a priority, as you know. Planes, aeroplanes which are used at, at the moment for calibration is an expensive affair. We sell the solution for calibration. Air transport has a, has a central role to play on tourism, which relies on it both for international and domestic tra uh, travel. Indeed, these two in industries are interdependent. It is essential, therefore, to review the air transport contribution in tourism, whilst also looking at how to harness regional tourism with a focus on Africa. Generally, it's found out that there's a lack of competitive, uh, competitiveness. A lot of the products that are being sold across the continent are almost similar. Uh, there's a concern for safety and security Again, another study was uh, done which indicated that um, a lot of regions that could attract a lot of uh, tourists cannot do so because of uh, security concerns. Uh, the one Air transport, when now we come back to tourism, is I think one of the most important aspects of the industry and has profoundly shaped the growth and development of several tourism regions. Uh, and there's no doubt that, especially in Kenya, that an uh, efficient and robust transportation network does wonders to the development of tourism in that region. And I use the two words together, efficient and robust. You may have uh, a transport system that is not efficient, it, it does negative marketing to the product. Air travel and larger aircraft, better connections, are giving us more opportunities to move more numbers to Africa. We've recently launched the first direct flight from Nairobi to New York. 
and we have a lot of expectations as to what it will do between this destination and one of our actually our leading market right now as dr adi will tell us is the usa so having a new direct flight connecting uh, that ease of travel does wonders to open up the region as we as we know it next slide at the access as being an ability within the continent to have borderless tourism but with this comes borderless trade because we believe that the two are inextricably uh, linked for most nations around africa tourism will be contributing anything between 10 to 12 percent of the gdp which in essence means that tourism is probably responsible for one in 10 jobs in each of the uh, each of the countries within our continent the importance of this is that according to the body such as world travel and tourism council the direct contribution of travel and tourism to Africa's economy was 72.8 billion. That's 3.3% 3, 3 of GDP, and it's forecasted to rise 4%. It means that it is a fundamental part of the economies within Africa. And therefore, if we consider that access is the driver of tourism, then it, it begins to make the, the conversation around how do we move around the continent a lot more pertinent. Guidelines on negotiation. With the establishment of the single market, the AU would be able to negotiate external um, air service agreement as a block. Such an approach is feasible if only the following conditions are met. Um, <clears throat> you know, completion of the African air transport single market, definition of an external policy and guidelines for negotiation. Uh, AU must be empowered to conduct such negotiations. AU must hold a clear negotiating mandate given by member states. Uh, although the negotiations can be conducted from block to block in terms of drafting, the guidelines are addressed mainly to, to member states. African airlines against the chi chi Chinese, the numerous Chinese airline alone cannot, cannot uh, uh, be able to, 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 to negotiate. But if Africa can go there as a block, then the, the, the level of negotiation can be approved. Accompanied by footnotes to comment on specific differences by third countries or block of states. The second part of the guidelines that we've drafted provides specific guidelines, clauses for each of the countries and regions. This structure enables flexibility to add on other regions as required, like the Caribbean states, Latin America, etc. What that is saying is that uh, except uh, an airline that is owned by member states or nationals of member states. So in case of Africa also, we should be thinking that if an airline is owned by a number of member states or the nationals, then that airline can be, can be designated. Certain air service agreement, it is proposed to introduce a safeguard provision related to possible unfair competitive practice. In that case, member states are invited to consider airline practices which may be regarded as possible unfair competition practices and then submit to closer examination. Uh, in the discussions here on SATAM, some, some, some countries raise the issue of uh, uh, dominance by bigger airlines you know, within the SATAM market. Frankly, this is where the danger is when, when, when we deal with uh, third countries, because those are the airlines that actually dominate Africa, as uh, the Secretary General of Afra, Afra said. So in negotiating with some of these uh, third countries, we have to make sure that there are safeguards to make sure that they don't dump uh, capacity in Africa or in the region. But uh, environmental protection, the general principle here is to make sure that we accept uh, the guidelines provided by ECAO, that the COSIA, um, as uh, the principle to be applied by both parties. Then settlement of dispute, we, we believe that uh, the guidelines also should uh, borrow from the SATAM uh, guidelines on dispute settlement and uh, other international uh, best practices in this uh, particular domain. The 39th Assembly, uh, it was agreed that the Secretariat should develop a multilateral agreement. Uh, to liberalize market access and also develop specific agreements to further liberalize air cargo services and also develop a multilateral convention on um, liberalization on 
of, of investments of foreign airlines. So more or less liberalizing ownership and control, which uh, you often refer to as um, substantial ownership. An issue of having an agreement. After all, we've had the Yamasukro decision, and it is the, within the sovereignty of the state to want to either go ahead or not. So I feel it's, it's more on first establishing the legality of what you want to do. Yes, we may say, oh, it's in, within the constitutive uh, uh, rights of AU to do this, but the states must be fully carried along. And, and you now have to educate the states that if we have to negotiate with you uh, on behalf of the bloc, these are the things we are going to negotiate with. Even when EU is trying to negotiate on behalf of other EU states, it's not as if they negotiate the total package of the agreements. There are certain things that are still left for individual states to negotiate, but the broad framework of the agreements are done by the Commission on behalf of the states. So I think, first of all, like a forum like this where you could uh, talk and educate, the AU should try and hold a workshop for member states for them to understand, even if they want to negotiate on their behalf, these are the things we are going to negotiate on your behalf, but you still have a right to determine the issue of frequency, the issue of capacity. So the, the member states and the EU work together as a team, not as uh, you are negotiating on their behalf, they are still going ahead to do their own individual negotiation. And at the end of the day, the confusion still continues. I think there is need for proper harmonization of purpose and for states to be carried along in what they are doing. And that was what was missing in the case of ECOWAS. And that was why nothing was concluded because most of the states really didn't understand what was happening. Airlines. So, so long as the, the negotiations have been negotiated on behalf of that state, because it's a member of the group, uh, it, it, it's entitled to what we call proxy de designation. So you can uh, point to an airline of a, another country and designate it on your behalf. So between, and it will be accepted. So uh, the, the guidelines draws its inspiration from Article 6 of the uh, of uh, of the Yamasukuro uh, decision, because that is is been adopted as the criteria for eligibility, and it, it takes into account uh, either the airline is substantially owned and effectively controlled, or is incorporated a place of incorporation, uh, or is owned multinationally, like in the case of. Uh, 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 Air Africa, uh, person to Article 77 of the Chicago Convention, and uh, or even nationals from not necessarily the state owning the airline, but nationals of other African states coming together to incorporate an airline that is privately owned but multinational in character. So uh, it takes care of all these scenarios. successful meeting. May I ask you to join me to give a round of applause to the round of applause.
Republic of Kenya for hosting this. Red roses too, they bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue, clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark blessed night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They really learn, baby, I love you. I couldn't help it. That is how I feel in Kenya. <laughs> Congratulations. I want to say thanks to the head president, uh, Dr. Bernard uh, Aloui, for spearheading the council members for ensuring that this marketplace produced what we all look forward to. We look forward to the unity, we look forward to the connectivity, and what we did here, what you, the delegates, did here, what the ICAO has decided must take place is connectivity, and that is the resounding word through aviation this year and I know for time to come. Connectivity. You were here because you wanted to set the platform. You wanted to make sure that the foundation was laid between states so that airlines can ride on that. And that is what we are looking for, connectivity. Remembering that within the next 10, 15 years, air travel will be doubling. We must have connectivity. Africa, get together. Open your skies come together. There must be one, one sky for us to fly within. That event, Nairobi's 11th ICANN meeting, attracted 71 states, conducting 480 meetings and reaching 400, approximately 400 agreements and arrangements. Compared to... Then, total number of negotiators attended was 550, including all the workshops and other side events. Total number of participants is 1,200. 1, <laughs> and this is the first ICANN event opened by the head of the state. So thank you very much for the Republic of Kenya and His Excellency President Kenyatta to open and grace our participants. Uh, we concluded this time that uh, 400 agreement arrangement. That's why that we are urging that uh, all the states to encourage the industry, particularly airlines, to utilize these new commercial opportunity, business opportunities. Right now, that according to our ICAO's corporate key performance indicators, uh, only 43% of the uh, bilateral opportunities are utilized by direct flight. So we are urging the uh, member states to encourage industry to utilize that more and more these uh, the future commercial opportunities. Really, really, really appreciate the government and the people of Kenya for hosting this lovely event. I also want to thank ICAO for accepting to have Kenya host ICANN, the second in Africa. I think uh, we need to clap for Kenya. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am so grateful that the 
Council of ICAO, the President of ICAO, the first African president in 70 years, has honored us to be here with us, and this also being his last term. So to me, it is historic, and this is something that we don't take for granted. So we are very, very appreciative. And for our DG, we have no words. I believe that the council members will uh, agree with me that DG has been exceptional. So let's clap for him. Uh, Vibrant and engaging week at the ICAO Air Services Negotiation Event, ICANN 2018. Kenya is honored to have been chosen to play host to such a distinguished gathering of aviation professionals who are drawn from all corners of the world to redefine, re-establish, recalibrate, renegotiate air service agreements that would strengthen the positioning of aviation as a key enabler of economic growth worldwide. To be precise, ICANN 2018 in Kenya was glad to host delegations from 71 countries who held 480 meetings and negotiations and signed 400 agreements. I'm told that this is a record. And then also in those negotiations were 550 delegates who were negotiators and including the workshops and side events, we had 1,200 participants. I think that's another record as well. This was not just about air service negotiations. The ICANN 2018 event was also a melting pot of current aviation trends, exchange of experiences and ideas on improving aviation and connectivity globally. In addition, ladies and gentlemen, the event provided a formidable platform of networking for all aviation stakeholders, further underpinning the importance of aviation as being at the core of enabling commerce and the thriving of world tourism. Five-day negotiations, we are hopeful, hopeful that it will culminate in enhanced connectivity between Kenya and the rest of the world. And Kenya holding 34 meetings was very significant because it means that there's an interest in states to partner with Kenya to improve connectivity and market access. And hence, to realize the full benefits of the negotiations would be a full implementation of the agreements committed to by the different states. The bigger picture is that it offers the promise of thousands of additional jobs worldwide, but will also open up markets for Kenyan exports. We shall have freer movement of people and that will help grow our country's annual GDP, among other benefits. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of ICANN 2018, and it gives me great pleasure to declare that the IKO Air Services Negotiation Event, ICANN 2018, is now officially closed.